So let's now look at sort of uh, some pseudocode of how the power function operates. Remember power, you know, if I take a number, raise it to, you know, 2 to the uh, 3 power is 2 times 2 times 2. 8. So if I asked you suddenly, what is the t of n of this equation? Go ahead, take a second, maybe pause the video and calculate it out if you'd like. Okay, so hopefully you paused it. So if we look at this, we've got sort of this result. And again, you could, if you're still struggling on the pseudocode, you could still think about that as result equaling 1. Well, just like we've said in our past videos, this is going to have its own kind of, it's a primitive operation. It has to create itself in memory. And so we look at that as just having a 1. I'm going to skip over just for the sake of skipping over it, the for loop, because that's the complicated portion, uh, down to this re return. Now, this is actually another primitive operation. I need to take that result and move it elsewhere, so we would also classify this as another one. Okay, so now we're at the big, fancy uh, for loop. So, if we kind of looked at this, and we, we look at it either in, uh, let me use a different color for the for loop, use green. Uh, so if I look at that 4, 4 i starting at 1 to n, ah, do the following. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore sort of that, that line 3 for a second. Just worry about this. Well, we already discussed how the i getting created is its own sort of 1. When I have to exit, uh, Let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Exit. That's its own one as well. And then we have to look at, well, I want to go from 1 to n. So that's actually, if we kind of again look back at real syntactical code, I'm needing to first make my i++, plus plus, so that's i++, plus plus, so that's going to get classified as an n. And then I need to do a comparison here. I need to say, is i still less than n? So it's another comparison. So just like we've seen in the past, this sort of statement is going to make 2n plus 2. So now we've got to look at result, arrow, result times y. So this can get a little kind of hairy, because if we, we think about it for a second, result by itself. We know that that's going to cause us to access memory, right? I need to find result every single time. Now, this second result, I actually don't have to access it because I've already accessed it once. So, we're good. We, we are solid here uh, entirely. The same thing actually happens when we deal with my Y. I already have it sort of accessed in memory up here. So, by came in and I did my multiplication for a second, you'd see that I'm actually able to just kind of look at this as another calculation. This in itself would just be another one. Multiplication, again, y we know, result we know. So we don't have to access either of those in memory. But here's the issue. Those, if we added them up, are going to create Problem is, I don't do this instruction only two times. I'm going to have to do it n times, just like I had to do my i plus plus n times, just like I had to do my i less than n two times or n times. I'm going to need to do this two n times because I'm going to this gets translated. Let me actually uh, change my color. This because I have to do it every single time is going to be an n. This, every single time I have to do it, is going to be an n. And so as a result, this has to become 2n.